Welcome to this course. In this course, we will be talking about web development using WordPress. Let's get started. What is web development? Web development is the building and maintenance of websites for the internet or an intranet. Web development can range from developing a simple static page or even plain text to complex web applications and social network services. The word web development is made up of two words, which are web, which refers to websites, web pages, or anything that works over the internet, and development, which is a process of building an application from scratch. Web development is the work that happens behind the scene to make a website look great, work fast, and perform well with a seamless user experience. Web developers do this by using a variety of programming languages. The languages they use depend on the type of task they are performing and the platforms on which they are working. Web development skills are in high demand worldwide and well paid too, making it a great career option. It is one of the easiest accessible higher paid field as you do not need a traditional university degree to become qualified. The field of web development is generally broken down into two parts. We have the front end web development, which is known as the user facing side. Then we have the back end, which is the server side. Let's talk about front end development. What is front end development? The front end development is the part of a website that the user interacts directly and is termed as front end. It is also referred to as the client side of the application. Developers who code front end use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as the basic programming languages. There are also different types of frameworks and libraries used in front-end development. Some of the frameworks are AngularJS, React.js, Vue.js. We also have libraries like Bootstrap, Tailwind CSS, and jQuery UI. Now let's talk about back-end development. What is back-end? Backend is the server side of a website. It is the part of the website that the user cannot see and interact. It is the portion of website that does not come in direct contact with the users. It is used to store and arrange data. Backend developers work with languages such as PHP, Java, Python, Node.js. The list of backend frameworks and libraries include Express, the Django, Rails, Laravel, and Spring. Now let's talk about the tools that are used for web development. There are various tools used for web development. Some of these tools is the browser. The browser is a very essential tool for web development because it is the browser that interprets and displays the code to the users in a readable manner. Then we have the code editor. The code editor is used by programmers to tell the computer what to do. We also have the CMS, the content management system. Then we have the hosting server and the domain name. In this course, we will be talking about the CMS as a major tool for web development. What is content management system? Content management system is a software that is used for creating, managing, and editing a website. Even if you do not have any specialized technical skill or knowledge. With CMS, you can develop and design a website without even having to write the code. In short, a CMS website is a website that is developed by using a content management system. 
CMS does not only helps in managing the text or images which have been displayed on the website, but they also help in tracking the user session. They help in handling the search queries, collecting visitors' feedback and comments. They help in hosting forums on website, and they even do lots more. Let's talk about the different types of CMS that we have. There are various types of content management systems that are used in web development. Some of them are Drupal, WordPress, Joomla, Prestra Shop, Magento. We can even call WooCommerce a CMS system that works just for e-commerce websites. In this course, we will be focusing on WordPress as a leading CMS. What is WordPress? WordPress is a free open source content management system that is based on PHP and MySQL. It is the most widely used CMS software in the world. And as of June 2021, it powers more than 40% of the top 10 million websites and has an estimated 64% market share of all websites built using a CMS. WordPress started as a simple blogging system, but it has evolved into a full CMS with thousands of plugins, widgets, and themes. It is licensed under the general public license. WordPress can be installed in two ways. The first way is manually, which will be done by yourself, and this can take up to five minutes for the installation. While the second is by the server host, it's just one click installation. The server host installation is an installation that is done inside the C panel of the web server. This can only be accessed when you buy a hosting plan from a server host. So how can we install WordPress manually? There are five major steps I would be walking you through in this course to install WordPress on your web server by yourself. The first step is to download and unzip the WordPress package. That's if you haven't downloaded the WordPress package by yourself. The second step is to create a database for WordPress on your web server, as well as a MySQL or MariaDB. That's if you're using MariaDB. While the third step is to find and rename wp-config-sample.php. You have to find this file and you have to rename it to wp-config.php. Then edit the file and add your database information. Note, if you're not comfortable with renaming files, this step is optional and you can skip it as the install program would create the wp-config.php file for you. Step four, upload the WordPress files to the desired location on your web server. If you want to integrate WordPress into the root of your domain, then you have to move or upload all the contents of the unzip WordPress directory into the root directory of your web server. For example, if your domain name is www.example.com, then you need to move everything inside the unzip WordPress directory into the root directory of your web server, excluding the WordPress directory itself. Please don't make this mistake. Do not move the folder of the WordPress directory itself. Simply move everything inside the folder. But if you want to have your WordPress installed in its own subdirectory on your website, let's say, for example, you want your WordPress to be installed inside example.com slash blog. Then what you do is you move everything inside the unzipped WordPress directory into the folder called blog. This way you can access your WordPress simply by typing example.com slash blog. Step five, run the WordPress installation script by accessing the URL in the web browser. 
this should be the URL where you uploaded the WordPress file. So if you install the WordPress in the root directory, then you simply visit your domain name, which is example.com. But if you install the WordPress in its own subdirectory, let's say the subdirectory is called blog, then you need to type example.com slash blog to access your WordPress site. That's it. WordPress should now be installed in your website. Note, WordPress can be used both offline and online. There are various ways in which we can use our WordPress offline. Some of these ways are through the desktop server, through Bitnami. You can use your WordPress through ZAMP, MAM, Vagrant, and Local by Flywheel. You can also use your WordPress online through the web server. And there are different web hosts in which you can use your WordPress. Some of them are wordpress.com, bluehost.com, nameship.com. And there are also various web hosts in which are not mentioned in this course, in which you can install your WordPress and use it perfectly. Now that our WordPress is fully installed, let's take time to familiarize with WordPress. Now you want to take your first steps with WordPress. So what next after installing WordPress on your website? You need to log in into your WordPress website. Here is a login page, and this is exactly how your login page should look like. Here, you begin by logging into the administration area or the back end of your website. All you need to do is add slash WP admin to the end of your site's URL. Let's say your website is example.com. What you need to do is to add example.com slash WP admin, and then it will bring you to this page. In this page, you enter your username and password. And once you log in, you'll be taken directly to the admin area or dashboard of your website. This is exactly how your WordPress dashboard should look like. So what can we do inside our WordPress dashboard? This is where the organization of your website begin. So take your time to look at the site before you get into changing it and figuring out how it all works. It's important to see how the WordPress site work, how your team is laid out and how it's working. Consider this as a test drive before you start adding all the special features to your website. Let's take a quick trip around. When you just install your WordPress, you only have one post, which is residing within a page that is laid out as your own page or the front page. If you click on the title of the post, it will take you to the specific page for that post. The first page or home page of your site features the most recent post on your website. Each post title will link to the actual page of the post. Some team designers design their single post page to look different from the home page. But I really want you to test drive the WordPress administration screen. It is really important to familiarize yourself with the back end of your new website. In fact, the first page you see after logging in, which is called the dashboard, is a collection of information and data about the activities and action on your WordPress website. The dashboard features a list of the most recent activities you've accomplished on your site, and it helps to keep you up to date on new and interesting bits of information from many WordPress resources. On the left side of the screen is the main navigation menu, detailing each of the administrative function you can perform. Move your mouse down the list and the sub menus will fly out for you to move your mouse to and click. Once you choose a parent navigation section, it will open up to reveal the options within that section. Let's start with the user screen. When you click on the user tab, the screen will change and you will see the screen called all users that shows a list of all the users. From here, you can add or change existing users and author's account. In the navigation menu, click on your profile menu choice 
This is where you will enter information about you, the author and administrator of the site. You, this is where you get to fill in the information and click update profile when done. Now let's look at some other powerful features of the WordPress admin. Here is where you can change the look of your website. Team screens allow you to change the look of your site using different teams. Teams are presentation styles that completely change the look of your website. And these can be found in the appearance tab. These teams are designed by developers and users. There are hundreds of teams available for you to choose from. In your appearance screen, you'll see a list of currently installed team. To quickly change the team, simply click on the activate button on the one of the teams listed. Then click on your site name in the top toolbar to see how it looks. Once you click on another team, then you get another look on your website. It's that easy. Now you can go back to the appearance and customize your team however you want. There are hundreds of WordPress teams to choose from. All of them do basically the same thing, but graphically, they present your information in different ways. You can choose a few that look interesting to you and meet your audience needs and your desires, and then test. Say, for example, you want your website to be an e-commerce site where your customers can buy stuff. There are specific teams that are designed for that feature. And let's say you want to use your website as a blog where people come to you to read news. There are also different teams that are designed for that feature. So you need to consider what exactly you're using your WordPress site for, how you want your WordPress site to look like, and what you want your clients to see while choosing the best WordPress team. So let's move on. Back in the administration screen, take a look at the post screen. You can use the tabs under the post menu to write and manage your post. Let's start by making your first test post in the Add New tab. Once you click on the Add New, you should display this screen. Add the title of the article in the space allocated. Then write the text in the Start Writing or Type to Choose a Block section. This is just for a test, so you can write anything you want. When you are done, click on the publish button at the top right of the page. Then click a second time to confirm the publication. Now that you've gotten a feel for writing posts, you can view your post by clicking your site name in the toolbar at the top of your screen. Here is where you handle your comment. Part of the phone of WordPress is the ability to have viewers leave comments on your website. It creates a dynamic interchange between you and the viewers. Do you want to comment on your posts? Comments on posts come in a variety of forms, from a good job comment to extensive conversations and commentary about the post. Or maybe you're seeking comments that add to the information you've posted. Responding to comments and moderating them can also take up a lot of time. If they are critical to your site, then include them and consider how you want them presented. You can make a few comments yourself on the posts you created. Take a look at how they are laid out and consider how you might want them to look to fit into the design and layout of your website. When you have reached your decision about how you want the comments to be handled, then you can take your time to edit your comments in the comment section. In the comment section, you manage the comments from your users. You remove unwanted comments. You can even put some comments as spams and approve some comments to be shown on your website. Let's move on. So how do you create categories and what exactly are categories used for? Posts are usually stored in categories or tags so you can keep related topics together. Right now, you only have one category 
in the category section. And that is the default category that comes with the WordPress, which is the uncategorized. You will soon want more. You can add new categories in from the post through the category tabs. In the add new category area, you can simply fill in the information about your category. You can continue to add your parent categories going down the list. And you can also create new category from the categories section, add the parent categories and add a slug to your category. Make sure you hold off on entering the subcategory until all the main categories are entered. Note, you can add any category at any time, but make a note of the fact that categories can be sorted in WordPress in two ways. The first way is by name, which is alphabetically. And the second way is by the ID number. As you enter the categories, they are assigned an ID number. It is difficult to change this number. So if you don't want your categories sorted alphabetically, then enter them in the order you want to see them presented on the screen. Let's do some little setting up to our website. Before you get to the graphic look of your website, you might need to do a little more administration to set up your sites. Some of this administration might be to change the URL setting or to do some other things. The setting tab in the WordPress admin sidebar is the central hub to configure settings for different sections of a WordPress website. It contains multiple sub panels and many WordPress plugins also add their setting page as a menu under the settings tab. Clicking on it takes users to the settings, which is the general screen. Other default sub panel under the setting tabs are reading, writing, discussion, media, and permalink. Only a user with the administrator user role can have the access to the setting tab. Let's talk about the general tab. The general tab contains settings such as site title, tagline, WordPress URL, the site URL, email registration, and many other general options for the WordPress site, as you can see on the screen. Let's move further and talk about the WordPress media. Media is a tab in your WordPress admin sidebar which is used to manage user upload. It is used to manage user uploads such as images, audio, video, and other files. Under the media menu, there are two screens. The first screen is the library, which lists all the files in the media library. These files can be edited and deleted from the library. The second screen is Add New, which also allows users to upload files. Remember, users can also upload media, such as images and videos, while writing a post or creating a page. However, the Add New link allows users to upload files without attaching them to a specific post or page. What exactly is WordPress plugins? And how do we use WordPress plugins? WordPress plugins can also be known as add-ons or extensions. They are software scripts that add functions and events to your website. They cover the gamut from up-to-date weather reports to a simple organization of your posts and categories. Plugins are designed by volunteer contributors and enthusiasts who like challenges and problem solving. They are usually fairly simple to install through the WordPress admin plugin screen. Just follow the instruction provided by the plugin author. Remember, most of these plugins are free and they are non-essential, but some comes with a pro version, which you have to pay or subscribe for. If you have any problems with the plugins, you can easily contact the plugin author. You can simply contact the plugin author's website or the plugin source first. 
then search the internet to help with that specific plugin issue. And if you haven't found a solution, then you might need to visit the WordPress forum for more help. How do we install plugins in our WordPress website? All you need to do to install plugin is to go to the plugin section, click on the add new and click on install now. When you click on install now, your plugin is installed. And after installing your plugin, you need to activate the plugin for the plugin to work. So for you to activate your plugin, you simply click on the activate button, which comes up after you click on the install now plugin to activate your plugins. Let's talk about WordPress builders. There are various web builders that can be used in WordPress. Some of them are Gutenberg, Elementor, DV. Let's take a look at Gutenberg. What is Gutenberg? Gutenberg is also known as the block editor, which is the default WordPress page or post editor. It was introduced in 2018 for the first time with the WordPress 5.0 version. The WordPress team understood the needs of the community for a more advanced and intuitive default editor as well as the trend in website building. That's how Gutenberg Editor came to be. And it actually replaced the former editor, which is called the Classic Editor. Here is an example of how a Gutenberg block editor looks like. Let's move on and talk about the other editor, Elemental. What is Elemental? Elementor is the most popular page builder among the WordPress users. It has an average rating of 4.7 out of 5, and it has over 5 million active installations. Elementor was first introduced in 2016, and it took over the lead very fast. The reason for the popularity of Elementor is because of its difference from the usual WordPress text editor. Elementor is a visual drag and drop builder, which makes creating a website through WordPress easier and faster. Here is an example of how an Elementor page builder looks like. We'll also be looking at the DV builder. What is DV? DV is a premium WordPress team and standalone WordPress plugin from Elegant Teams. It allows users to build websites on WordPress using the visual drag and drop DV page builder. DV was first released in December 11, 2013. DV is a visual page builder that makes it easy to build websites without the need to know any code. DV comes with 46 pre-made models that can be easily dragged into your website to give instant website elements, such as image sliders, contact forms, accordions, number counters, shops, and so on. DV also comes with hundreds of free pre-made DV layout templates that can be loaded into your page and customized using the Visual Builder. Here is an example of how the DV page builder looks like. Now that I've walked you through various of features that the WordPress comprises of and how WordPress can be used to build your website, it is time to practice. Here is a school WordPress website that you can look at the layout and build your own WordPress website. In the next section of this course, we will be building this amazing website. Here is the home page. We also have the admission page. and the cost page. 
this is what we will be building in the next section of this course. This would be the end of the course. Thank you very much for staying true. Goodbye.